Yeah, well, this is uh, we're excited to be here at the Combine, and this is an important exposure. We went through a very productive round of February meetings, so we're able to set the board based off the film, and now we get into this part of the process. And I know different people see the Combine different ways, but this is a very important exposure for us. A any touch point with the players that we can have is, is critical. The, the interviews, the formals, the informals, seeing them work out and compete, and just being here with all our peers, agents, if you handle this week the right way, it can be very productive. So uh, we're excited about being here. Yeah, well, well, the most important thing is the makeup. We're, we're here working to build a championship roster one player at a time. And to build a championship roster, you have to have championship makeup and you have to have the right kind of culture. And so assessing the makeup and assessing the character, making sure the players fit our ethos, smart, tough, highly competitive players, that's always going to be number one in, in what we do. Everything else matters. The tape obviously matters and, and, and what kind of football players they are and their, their talent level. And yes, the measurables and the statistics and all those things matter. It's all a part of the equation, but number one is always going to be the makeup. Yeah, well, well our, the elephant in the room, right? We have some big numbers um, associated with uh, four players, um, particularly our quarterback. We have a big cap number, and. Uh, all those players with the big cap numbers, it's not their fault. They're just good professionals that come in and do their job, and I want to be clear with that, but it is a, a challenge. It's not a, I, I wouldn't say it's a, uh, it's a problem. I would say it's a challenge and something we have to work around. So it's important to make sure we go through the process of, of finding the right ways to open up some cap space, and, and we have to add players and we have to improve this roster. That's important. And when you're at different points, there are times where um, you'll handle the, the salary cap and handle contracts a different way. Um, some, some teams feel like they're one player away and they're going to make a big splash in free agency and spend a lot of money. We're not at that point. We have to be patient. We have to be patient. Uh, we have to be selective and we have to be cost effective. So uh, where we are with our team, we have to figure out ways, the right ways to create cap space and then make sure we're patient and, and we, make, uh, we find value. Well, there are a lot of different ways, whether you're talking about contract extensions, um, whether you're talking about there are going to be cuts, there are going to be trades, um, there are going to be contracts that we do convert. And we don't, I think another elephant in the room is, uh, are we rebuilding? Are we, are, are we trying to win now? And I would say we're trying to have our cake and eat it too. We want to be smart. And, and we don't want to make decisions that are going to hurt us in future years, but we also want to build the best team that we can. So we're going to work hard to, to be smart and calculate in our decision making, but we also have to improve this roster this offseason and add competition. Well, I think, I think every – the seat I sit in, I'm a general manager. I'm one of the 32. So what I have to do is look in the mirror and, and look at what we're doing in Atlanta. I, I can focus on that area, what we're doing in Atlanta, um, to help this part of the process. And so I have to make sure that, number one, everyone in the building, everyone in the building has opportunities to continue to grow. And whether we're talking about coaches, whether we're talking about people in the personnel department, um, the training staff, make sure people in your building are able to grow and are able to develop. And you have, uh, you're very intentional in doing that. And then also the pipeline. Every time you're bringing in people, whether you're bringing in coaches, scouts, or any area of the organization, make sure you're bringing in minorities and, and, and everyone has opportunities to get in your organization and then grow. So for me personally, um, I just look in the mirror and make sure that we're doing the right things here in Atlanta. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think it is. And, and look, the league is, is going to look at uh, the, the situation every year. And, and I know the league is, is, is trying their best to improve in the areas that they can. But I, I do. I think 
for me, I can I can't solve the we, we can't solve the problem for every single team, but we can look in the mirror and do the best we can for the Atlanta Falcons. Well, we look for succession plans at, at every position. Uh, we have to add to the roster at every single position. And I think where you can get in trouble is if you if you reach and you feel desperate in certain areas. And um, but we're not going to do that. And, and yet we're going to evaluate. We got to we actually had formal interviews with several quarterbacks yesterday. And, and there's a good group in this draft. There's different flavors. And so we're going to evaluate those players. And at the appropriate time, we will add uh, to that position. Um, but I think you can get yourself in trouble if you if you reach and you don't feel good about what you're doing. I'm, I'm not going to say anything about any particular players or, or any because if I answer that question, we can go through the entire roster and, and talk about who they are. But I would say we're going to look to add to every position um, and try to improve this roster. Well, I, I would say if you go through each position in the draft, there's there are some positions where they can be a little more top heavy and it's not a strong midway through the draft. And there's some positions that there might not be a player at eight that we love, but yet we know there's depth in the draft. So we're still going through that process. And I wouldn't say where we see the strengths and weaknesses, but um, but but I would say they're good players at every position. The the wide receivers, there's some we met with a lot of those guys last night, too, and there's some real good receivers in the draft again some different flavors depending on what you're looking for, but and there's value at the top and throughout the draft at receiver. I'm glad you got the question in because you've gotten interrupted like four times, man. You're persistent. <laughs> so uh, Kyle Smith's a stud. It, it, it's funny, when people ask about Kyle Smith, I always show him my phone because I get texts from him or calls every night about 10, 10.30, 11 o'clock, and he's watching film and he wants to talk through something, and he just doesn't stop. This is all he does. All he cares about is football and, and building a good team. His, his mind's always going. That's the way he's wired. Uh, so he, he's, a, he's a stud. He's a really hard worker, and he's just obsessed with what he does. Well, I think at that position, when you when you go historically and look at edge rushers that have been successful, they've come in all shapes and sizes. You've had the tall, long, you've had the uh, undersized, and you've had guys with great 40 times, guys that don't have great measurables. It, it, they come in all shapes and sizes, and so it's just about assessing can that player uh, get to the quarterback, and is, is he a true pressure player? Does he win? Because when you start focusing on just the measurables and you try to create something, sometimes you can get yourself in trouble. So I would say the most important part is, is he winning those one-on-one -on -one matchups? It's uh, not something uh, we can talk about right now. There's, there's no update on it. Um, and when there is, we'll let you know. It's, it's great. Uh, Matt, he's a great professional, and he comes in and, and works every day and, and, and does everything he can do to help the team win. So, so I would say it's, a, uh, it's probably a question for Matt um, specifically, but from, from my vantage point, from my standpoint, uh, I really appreciate Matt and what he's been in terms of a leader, in terms of a worker, in terms of professional, everything he's done here, here in Atlanta. And um, so I would say for, for, from my standpoint, from my vantage point, it, it's been excellent. I appreciate him. Yeah, that's exciting, and, and I've said it before, obviously Kirby and, and that whole staff, that whole building, they did a great job building what they've built there. And, and it is kind of overwhelming when you look at all the players on that roster, um, particularly on defense, but also on offense. They have some really good players, and so, they're, like you said, they're right around the corner. So we have to really evaluate those players and, um, and look at them. And, and the interesting thing, too, is when you look around the league, and, and there's so many local players from Georgia that are really good. I, I'm, I'm hoping we actually can have the local day. We, we weren't allowed to have it last year with COVID, but if we can have that, that's exciting because there's a lot of kids that, that grew up in the Georgia area that ended up in some different areas that are really good football players. So, um, but we're excited about uh, spending a lot of time with those Georgia players. I 
So you're asking if the Calvin Ridley situation Got it. Got it. Well, well, that, again, that's a question for Calvin. Um, I, I can't address that, how he's particularly doing. But I will say, yes, the receiver position is important, and but it's a complimentary game. So our goal is to improve our team overall, because when you when you have a when you protect, when you have a good run game, then receivers are going to be more open when you're when you're playing good defense and you're playing with leads, it changes things. So I would say it's a complimentary game. So our goal this offseason is to improve the entire roster. And um, obviously the receiver position, that's an area we have to improve as well. The value of being here at the Combine? Yeah, and, and it really starts with, with assessing the makeup. And we have to take advantage of every touch point we have with our with, with with the players in this draft process because the most important thing is the makeup, and so whether it's the combine, whether it's pro days, personal visits, um, we, we have to take advantage of getting around those players, getting our hands on them, our coaches, our scouts, and make sure the players that we pull the cards off the board and the players we sign and bring into the building, we're bringing in the right culture and we're bringing in the right types of players. So it's uh, it's extremely valuable. Last year from being virtual, what did we learn? Um, what did we learn from last year being virtual? I, I guess I can say we, we, we're still going to utilize as, as long as, as much as the league allows us to do in terms of virtual meetings and we're going to utilize that and, and, and we'll still utilize that part of it. You can be pretty, you can be really efficient um, still having virtual meetings and virtual interviews as long as we're allowed to do that. So, so we'll utilize that. We did learn some things last year, but being in person is important as well. Thank you, ma'am. Well, number one, when um, the first thing we have to do is create a little cap space, and and then number one is is our players, and and we have a lot of players. I won't talk specifically about uh, CP, but. We have a lot of players that, that we want to resign, and, and that's important. Now, it's important for us to, you're never a player away, so we have to look at each specific player, evaluate the player, and look at the parameters of the types of contract that we can sign and what makes sense for us. And we have to stay disciplined with that because we're not trying to sign one player, we're trying to build a team. So we have to make sure we assess the value and stay within our parameters with every player. And on the other side of it, <clears throat> it's important for players to assess their market value along with their agents and their families and find the best situation for them because they have a small amount of time to make as much money as they can. And so we respect going through that process of the business. So with that, there are going to be some players that we're going to be able to resign. Some players are going to move on, and, and we understand that. But talking sp specifically about CP, that's an example of what we have to do this year in free agency. That was a situation where it was a month into free agency when we signed CP. He wasn't getting the offers he wanted, and, and again, a month into it, we, we signed him. We had a clear vision for him. It says a lot about him, the success that he had, because he's a great man. He's a great player. He added on and off the field, and it says a lot about our coaching staff and that they were able to find what he does well, and, and he had the most productive season of his career as an offensive player. So that shows the way we were able to find value in that, and and I believe it, it, it really shows the league that this is an attractive place to be. And you look at our coaching staff and, and you look at what they're able to do with players and you look at Atlanta and living in Atlanta, whether you're young and single or whether you, you're married, whether you have a big family, it's a great place to live. So living in Atlanta, the, the opportunities that we have in all three phases, because we have opportunities here, and we have a coaching staff that's going to get the most out of players. So I think CP is an example of what we have to do, especially with the constraints we have here this year. Yeah, because a lot of things we do when we evaluate value is we look at comps, position comps. And so when, when it is kind of that hybrid, unique position, it, it's tough to have um, 
you know, a Rolodex of a lot of comps with players like that. So it's tough to value. But at the end of the day for us, it, it boils down to assessing that makeup, assessing the fit, and looking at, at, at what we can do um, currently with, with our specific team. So um, it's not always easy to value that specific, specific position, but um, it's uh, something we have to do. Say it again. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Just like just like a, a, our whole rookie class and a lot of young players, it's important this off season for them to, to work and come back um, in a better situation. But he did some really good things this year, and, and we're excited about him in the future. Well, well, like I said, with any measurable, it's all a piece of the puzzle, right? It, it, it's all a part of it. Any measurable, any statistic, it, it, it's all a part of the evaluation. Um, but there's never going to be one thing that, that makes the decision. As, as a quarterback got smaller than that, though, how does that factor into it's, it's all a part of it. It, it. it all factors in, but there's never going to be one thing that completely eliminates or, or makes a decision for us. But we're going to look at everything. Well, uh, uh, like I say, we do have thresholds at every, at, at every, with every measurable, with every statistic. So it's things we look at. But the key is, is it, it's all that does is it makes that particular player or that particular whatever we're talking about. It can make them an exception in a certain category, but it, it's never going to make a decision. All right. Thank you. Thank you.